at halftime in Croke Park in the 2012 All-Ireland Football Final. Donegal leading Mayo two goals and four points to seven points. And here with me in studio, Joe, Broly, Pat Spann and Colin Moore. Three points in at Colin. It could have been a lot worse for Mayo. It could have been. I, and I must say I found that first half very entertaining. I think we all said when Donegal went seven points up after getting two goals, oh no, it's yeah. not going to happen again. Yeah. But I think Mayo's efforts in recovery have been heroic. They've shown fantastic character and they've got great points there from Enda Verley and Michael Conroy and really the likes of, uh, of Alan Dillon and Kevin McLaughlin mm -hmm. and Donald Vaughan have been inspirational when it looked as if Donegal were just going to overrun them. It was like a big steamroller there at times. And maybe the only thing that Donegal haven't planned for ever is to be six or seven points up in the first ten minutes of the sure. final because I'd say the plan for everything else. But Donegal have lost a grip. Why Michael Murphy has come out and why they have stopped mm. kicking the ball into him Mayo made a bad mistake leaving Kevin Keane and Murphy and paid a very heavy price for it. But it's a good game and it's still in the balance. I speculated before the match to you, Pat Spillane, what might happen if Mayo got off to a bad start. And they surely got off to a bad start. A goal in the first couple of minutes. And you might remember my answer. I said this Mayo team are a different animal. Yeah. This, you know, this, this goal came from... It didn't come from the blackboard, it didn't come from the training ground, it came from good, simple, old-fashioned, direct football where you play the ball in long to your, arguably your best forward, Michael Murphy, and as Colm alluded to, I mean, it was a mismatch. I can't understand why Jerk Africa wasn't initially given the role of, of policing Michael Murphy. But in the first couple of minutes, Donegal were playing this direct ball. Murphy was winning it, McFadden was He's winning it. Great hands, hasn't it Pat? And then, for a strange reason, they sort of abandoned this long direct ball, and Michael Murphy has either been brought out or himself has dropped out. So it's been an enjoyable, it's been an entertaining game. One of the things that intrigues me about Donegal is that they have a tendency to sit back on leads and be a bit casual. After seven minutes in the Kerry match, they were one two to no, to, to no score up and they didn't score again for 15 or 16 minutes and today again you know two goals and one point seven points up after after 11 minutes and they sat back and went 16 minutes without scoring it's an enjoyable game though Michael. I'll tell, I you, I'll tell you an interesting thing about it for the first time all year Donegal are jittery you could sense that mm. when he had that lead the unexpected lead the two goals and a point and I mean at that stage you thought I mean somebody behind me said you know may have collapsed during the period this time but there's no collapse on at all and in fact that, the reason that Mayo have come back into the game, apart from the fact that they have played well and they've scored three brilliant points, you know, that were very, very difficult scores and they've kept their concentration on, but they've been helped by six unforced errors where Donegal turned the ball yep. over, casual hand pass, panic stricken foot pass, things that are maybe. uncharacteristic and that means that says to me that Donegal are feeling because jittery here because they are in an unusual position. It's because they got off to that good start. We saw Michael Murphy's goal. They had another one in the net a few minutes later. Yeah, well, Donegal are used to grinding out wins rather than playing champagne football in the first few minutes. But again, unfortunate a mistake from Kevin Keane when the ball comes across here. You know, a, ha a shot for a point comes back off the post. Keane should have... Uh, he should have cleared that ball, dropped it out of his hand, and McFadden was very clinical, put the ball low. You know, David Clark is a very good goalie. He couldn't get near either of those goals, but two bad mistakes by Kevin Keane. And then after that, Mayo switched Cafferkey on to Murphy, and things have changed around, things have stabilised. But I think that, as uh, Joe has said, Donegal are jittery. They have never found themselves mm. in this position. Mm. It's new territory. Because they've okay. been taken on. They're yes. being taken on physically and they're being run at and they're in their, and that, they're in their face. You're, you're right about that, but I'm, I mean, like the referee the referee absolutely scotched the tactical foul in from Mayo with the first two yellow cards. First two fouls, two yellow cards. So now you're in an even playing field. We have another break to take here on the programme. More reaction to that first half straight after that. Now also there's a chance for you to enter our special competition because you might be heading to New York. Welcome back again to our coverage of the 2012 All-Ireland Football Final at halftime. Donegal leading Mayo two goals and four points to seven points. The second half coming up shortly. It will indeed. We speculated when Mayo conceded those early goals and fell seven points behind at one stage uh, that there was a fear of a collapse, as you guys have been saying, that didn't happen. 
but they had to they had to kick some great points to get themselves back into this they had, match. I mean, they went 15 minutes before they got their first point from play, but boy, did they kick some fantastic points! And Kevin McLaughlin stayed his ship with a fantastic point from 40 yards. And all these kicks are all difficult. They're from long really range. Impossible. They're from difficult angles. And there's guys coming down on the kicker. This is Mickey Conroy. Now watch when he kicks it. Like there's two guys going down in his boot. It's a brilliant kick. He's I mean, and, and they're having they are having more success when they come down the wings like they did against Dublin and shoot from outside that that D. They're very effective and great points. An issue that's emerging now in the game is that Mayo are blocking up the central column to their own defence, which is making it very difficult for Donegal to play their preferred running game. Donegal tried to kick with very limited success against Cork. I know that they've got the goal today from Murphy, but that's really the only return they've had from the long mm. ball. What's this? this is the best of the points from the outside of the left foot. But what's happening here is that Mayo are blocking up that central column with the two spare halfbacks. Donegal are having great difficulty running the ball through the middle and it's forcing Donegal to do things that they don't normally do. Mm -hmm. So tactically that's working well. OK, now earlier in the programme we heard from former Mayo player Anthony Finnerty and from Johnny Gold's winning captain of 1992, that was Anthony Malloy, there with Marty Morrissey again right now. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, plenty to talk about down the sideline as well. Anthony Finnerty, uh, it must have been heart attack stuff when you uh, saw two goals going in after just 11 minutes of play. Yeah, it was a bit of uh, the deja vu again, Marty. Uh, we had a nightmare start, or something like seven points down after 11 minutes. But fair play to the boys. They have rallied really well and made a great comeback, and we're well in the game now. We would be happy enough at halftime. Anthony Malloy, uh, Michael Murphy's going a goal after just three minutes. But then, as the lads were saying in the analysis there at halftime, Michael seems to be out around midfield. And yeah, well, you know, we got off to a dream start, really, and, uh, you know, all over the pitch, like our back settled terrible well, like we were good in there and we were playing the ball in quickly, the long ball into Michael Murphy was working. All of a sudden, uh, I think maybe we went seven points up, we went back to typical Donegal football again, a bit of mess and, and we slackened off and made mistakes. Now, why they stopped this, I don't know, or why they didn't leave Michael Murphy in where he was, like, and, you know, we done some stupid things as well, like, you know, and, and uh, lost possession and all that there, and, uh, we all promised that. Would you now change the plan at halftime if you were Jim McGuinness, put Michael Murphy at the edge of the square and boom it in long? Well, it's very hard, you know, like Jim, uh, you know, we're looking up the pitch there. Uh, I think we're playing him to a breeze here. It's very yeah. hard and there's a swirl and one out here, like, and uh, I think they'll, they'll probably go back, I think, to what we know best anyway, it's a short game. And, uh, you know, we try one or two long balls, like, and there were poor balls and they were cut out as well, like, but I, I think they'll revert back. I think we're a bit nervous, you know, we, we, we're not as good as our ball in Hampton has been, you know, against Cork or as crisp. And I don't think we, we, we're running into cool sacks as well, you know, so. We need a bit more wood as well going forward. Mayo have, have been heroic, as the lads on the panel have said at half time. Uh, you must have been inspired by the, the way they're taking their points, and they have showed a lot of character, haven't they? They have shown great character all year. Even in the semi final against Dublin, the last five minutes of the game, they pushed on and won it. Now we're in a position that we're back in the game again. But Donegal have always been very, very strong in the third quarter. And if we can stick in for the first 15 minutes, I think we're going to have a very interesting finish to this game. Anthony Malloy, Anthony Finnerty, thank you both for joining us. The word here, by the way, Michael, is we could be heading for another draw. Back to you. Marty, would you stop, please? Thanks for that. A crowd of 82,269 here at Croke Park today. They want to see this game finished, I can assure you, this afternoon. Colm Rook, the door is open against for Mayo. Three points in it. Can they now turn this around? Well, certainly the last 15 minutes of that half, their tackling was ferocious, their work rate went up. You know, they looked very nervous and they've turned it around and made Donegal look nervous. Sometimes in an All-Ireland final or in a big game, it's actually easier to play when you're behind because you throw a certain amount of caution to the win. Donegal sort of retreated back into their shell a little bit and they, they started to make a lot of mistakes that they haven't done. Even though Martin Mc, Mark McHugh and Carol Lacey's got a, on the ball quite a lot, Mayo now have started to get to grips with the kickouts around the middle of the field. They've started to throw their bodies in and win breaks and it's going to be very interesting. They've expended a huge amount of energy to get this far. But mind you, you fellas have been pointing out that the third quarter of the match, which is the next 15 minutes basically coming up, 
are dunny goals. This is the way they this pay it all year. This is, is where they do your damage to. So therefore, they should push on. And them. I said, I mean, they've outscored the, the, the opposition in the six games so far by 21 points in this third quarter. But as the boys alluded to there in the interview, there's no doubt about it that Donegal are nervous and they're under pressure and they've made more unforced error in that first 35 minutes than they have in the six previous championship games. So if Mayo can get in their faces and be as aggressive as they were in the last 15 minutes, well then Mayo are in with a damn good chance. Donegal are not a brilliant team. They've got to play at 100 miles an hour and that's what they've done all year. For the last 15 minutes of that first half, they haven't played at 100 miles an hour and that's what Jim McGuinness will be trying to get them back up to now. There's an All-Ireland title at stake. You would be nervous, wouldn't you? Time to hand back to Joe Canning and Martin Carney.